Hello friends, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel Layman's Guide to Machine Learning. In this particular video tutorial, I will explain the concepts behind logistic regression, how it works, uh, what is the logit function, what is the sigmoid function, how it calculates the probability associated with each of the observations. So let's get started. So uh, I have created a uh, uh, a, a hypothetical data set here which is basically uh, which has the uh, x1 as an independent variable which is the wind speed and uh, it says that uh, if the wind speed is 60 then the temperature is uh, minus 2 and it rains uh, when the wind speed is 70 the temperature is minus 6 and it rains and when the wind speed is 20 temperature is 4 degree and it will not rain uh, so basically uh, what we what what we do when we we want to, to predict y1 so i am touching a bit of linear regression here so that we can relate it later to the logistic regression so what we'll do here when we want to do a linear regression so if you want to predict temperature which is y1 we will do linear regression because the values here are minus infinity to positive infinity right and we want to predict these values right which can go to minus infinity to positive infinity you so in this particular case the, you can get an equation when you fit a line you can get an equation which will be like like this right in case if you want to go for a prediction of y2 which has only two values in it it rains and it does not rain can you fit this equation into here let us see what happens when we do linear regression using y2 as target so this is the y2 this is our x1 x1 now linear regression can take any value from minus infinity to 0 1 but our target y2 is bounded by 1 here and if you take 0 here it is bounded by 0 right so when we do linear regression it can go like this so it can predict some value which are beyond beyond 1 and it can predict some values which are which are less than zero right which is not possible in 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 case where when we are doing when when we want the values between one and zero so what we will do in this particular case in this particular case we have to transform y2 transfer y2 such a way that we can apply this particular equation we know that this particular equation will produce a values minus infinity uh, minus infinity to to positive infinity right but how do we apply this equation on y2 we are looking for probabilities here which are bounded by 1 and 0 right so what do we do here we will use a function a logit function with logit function which is also called as link logit link right what this function does is basically it transforms the probabilities which are coming for y2 into a linear thing so let's see how linear. so this logit function is basically logit function is basically you basically is uh, is log of the odds ratio right 
so this thing in inside it it is called the odds ratio odds ratio so log of the odds ratio it's called the logit function right so what it does is that so this odds ratio have the values between uh, between 0 to positive infinity right so it basically removes the ceiling the ceiling i means it basically basically removes the the probability it removes the probability one and it goes beyond that now it can go beyond that and what this log is does it it removes the floor removes the floor floor is is one right so this it uh, so this odds ratio it removes the one the removes the the uh, the seal the ceiling which is which is uh, which is one and this removes the floor which is zero right now when you do log of the odds log of the odds ratio the value can go minus infinity to positive infinity let's check it with then some example okay okay so you can see here right you can see the probability here is 0 0.5 0 0.05 if you take the probability as 0 0.05 the odd is odds ratio is p uh, divided by 1 minus p and the log odds is minus 2 so as you can see here value here varies from minus infinity to positive infinity it means that it can take any value between infinity and minus infinity right so this so this particular function when you when you plot this particular function right when you plot this particular function log of p divided by 1 minus p right and here it will be the probability against the probability you can get a curve like this right and this will be 0 and 1 and this will be minus infinity to <coughs> to positive infinity right right so as you so so you can see here that within this probability we have transformed our uh, you know our target variable okay when we get this probability we can transform this our target variable variable so that it can be so the values can go from minus infinity to positive infinity now we can use this transformed y to run a linear regression kind of equation right okay so this is called so this is basically called the log of odds okay now again we are so in this particular equation we still don't know what is the p here we don't have the coefficient right but we are not concerned about this thing okay this thing will talk about later how to get the co coefficient here we are really concerned about this how to get the p here right so we can take an anti log of this we can take the inverse of it 
so when you take the inverse of this right the the equation becomes so you can get the probability out of it so the equation will become e to the power minus exponent of beta 0 into plus plus b1 on x1 and when you plot this particular function right so when we plotted this logit function okay it is giving uh, this kind of curve when you plot this particular function when you plot this particular function so the probability will be now on y axis here it is in x axis and then your x axis will be here value of will be here and it will give you an sigmoid curve so this particular transformation it's basically when it's basically called the sigmoid function it's called the sigmoid function and uh, this particular thing is called the logit function right so inverse if you inverse it inverse of inverse of uh, inverse of the logit function is basically this sigmoid function and then you get the probabilities here right you get the probability on the y axis y axis and this x axis and this will again be bounded by 1 and 0 right so uh, so basically uh, if you have uh, a values of observations for example if there is a you know wind speed is 60 and then 70 then uh, 80 okay then we can say that okay if we, you plot like this okay then you can say that okay what is the what is the probability of each of the observation right again one thing i want to say for uh, the is odds ratio one it is called p minus p which is called the odds ratio odds ratio is basically you know success per failure okay so this uh, I just wanted to tell this now coming back again to uh, this particular equation okay so to get the probabilities we need to solve this uh, we need to get this beta 0 and beta 1 and x we already know okay so what this uh, so what this how to get how do we get this coefficient beta 0 and uh, beta 1 so this is uh, estimated by MLE which is called the maximum likelihood sorry maximum likelihood estimate so what is that I'll give, just give a brief introduction to it so what it does is that is that it is an uh, kind of uh, uh, which is a kind of algorithm which tries to uh, tries to estimate uh, the beta coefficient uh, where uh, uh, it tries to estimate the uh, the coefficient which maximizes the likelihood of the given observation given observed value so for example if for a for a particular uh, for, for a particular data set right uh, maybe if you take the x1 x2 x3 and here it is y okay and uh, if the b uh, if the coefficient associated with it are beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 3 and 
if the values are for example 1 0 okay then 1 and then a 0 so the mac maximum likelihood estimate will try to get those coefficient which takes the value of this particular first observation to close to 1 for this they will take those estimate the, those coefficient it will choose where the values are close to 0 so it's an iterative process basically right so this is how this MLE uh, works maximum so this is how we get the coefficients for each of the um, uh, each of the variables in it okay so uh, this is the particular concepts uh, in logistic regression so here uh, basically uh, basically what are the things uh, we have to you know understand uh, understand is that um, this is uh, this is the probability that I have shown you and uh, this is uh, the logit function basically where 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 it basically any values if you give it will basically bound it to 0 and 1 so that is the work of the logit function the work of the logit or or logistic function is it's to bound the values between 0 and 1 right and uh, this is the simple uh, logistic regression that I have done uh, given some random values or x1 and x2 x2 this is the value of y observed y this is the coefficient 0 and you can see here I have created a, 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 a logistic function out of it and which is again keeping the values to 0 and between the values to 0 and and 1 right So the so the main thing here is that uh, the uh, the the main thing here is is the is, is the logit function logit function which works which is the only it is used to used to used to cap the the value between between zero and one right so if you supply uh, if you if, if you supply any 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 value to logit function or sigmoid function function it will give the only output which are between 0 and 1 All right so this is uh, the basically main concept uh, uh, I've explained about regression so um, I think uh, I am not too confusing and uh, and uh, just thank you all for watching this and please subscribe my channel and uh, sh and share with uh, anyone who is uh, who is looking for any 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 sources on the machine learning and uh, please like it if you if you have really benefited from it for, for, for the next time thank you thank you so much yeah bye